something wrong, Mr. Wright. There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Oh. Uh, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 o'clock when I went out in the boat. That time everyone had gone home for the night, so I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Botts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. You know, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if that was the truth. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over this. Around what time was that? Uh, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12 o'clock. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know? Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order! Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case! <laughs> so, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. Wish I could be more helpful. Call my sister. Objection! Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart yesterday testified that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? How can you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, on my headphones. What?! Order! Order! And stop that booing! Mr. Butts, you are listening to a radio on earphones. Yeah, so what? That's crime? I listen to my radio, everybody listens to the radio, what's the big deal? Hmm... Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Vase of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm... Well, Mr. Wright, should we continue the testimony? Your Honor? Please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost! Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me! I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it, like, real bloomin' loud-like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. 
remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word of what this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Wait, your honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway. What this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so we could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, your honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. So you turned on the radio. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I shouldn't have said anything. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That's all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? Real booming loud. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it, but I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? What did he say? Mr. Wright. Please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what the radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh... Well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. It's the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. There is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you know, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12, 25, 15, 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard a gunshot before midnight? 
Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this vile claim. Show me evidence that there was a gunshot before midnight. Finally! Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50pm. Oh yeah? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this picture. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It's a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshot with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. So there's no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Vice of witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Uh huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murder in this case has the same idea as the murder in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yeah? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean... Is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fitchy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, Rocky. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. 
This assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 15 minutes after midnight. Well, Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. It was the murderer and Robert Hammond. What are you saying? That contradicts what you just told the court. You said that Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before this gunshot. Yeah, that's right. Also, might I mention the defendant, Miss Radworth, has admitted to being on that boat. Uh, right, your honor. Crash and burn. Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. I'm going to have to penalize you for this foolishness. <sighs> I'll ask you again. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond had met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. Murderer's name? Right. It's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah! Can you face my time? I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop. Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not in a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of a crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. I heard a gunshot, your honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. Where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gold Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, your honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really, but I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol in the boat, Mr. Wright? Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. It's the moment you run out of explanations, it's the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? 
the murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol on the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body. He threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on McGord Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I'd like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him, quickly! We can't allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. Goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Yay, yeah, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? You don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What's this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. <laughs> 